511 on Jordan's Stormy Banks. One of these days, we're all going to be on the other side. I can't help but think about all the 
you hear all the arguments and different things about our environment, protecting about fossil fuels and all that, but just think about this third verse. You don't have to worry about it. No chilling winds nor poisonous breath can reach that healthful shore. I'm bound for the promised land. Yes, I'm bound for the promised land. Oh, who will come and go with me? I am bound for the promised land. Amen. Amen. Good to see everybody with us today. And if you're visiting, come back and be with us anytime. Right. And welcome here at Bethel Baptist. Listen now as a choir says.
cards of sympathy or anything so uh, but anyway you know most of my little talks have a two-part story to them I'm gonna tell you how rich I was you know when I went to grade school I had to take ham sandwiches when them other kids had bologna and all that good stuff you know we had hogs and e eggs and all that and my parents took me to church three times a week Oh, my. Yeah. Planted the seed, 
and I'm here today because of that. That's how rich we are, always. All right. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this day you've given us, Father. Thank you for our church and our church family, Lord. We'd ask your blessings on each and every person here and on this offering today, Lord. Use it to further your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Jesus wants to love you, there is none above you, you are precious in his sight. He will never fail you, when the doubts assail you, he'll be with you day. It reaches down and touches me. His love, His love is a endless love that will last through all eternity. Jesus wants to love you. There is none above you. You are precious in His sight. Touches me. He is love. His love is an endless love that will last through all eternity. His love. His love is a boundless love and it reaches down and touches me. His love. His love is an endless love. All eternity. His love. 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 His Amen. Well, you can't beat songs about heaven and about God's love that made it possible for us to go to heaven uh, because He demonstrated His love through the Lord Jesus. He gave Him to be our Savior. Please turn with me to Philippians chapter 3 and a verse there that we've covered on Sunday nights. Um, that's very, very important for us in today's message. This verse, uh, Philippians 3, 9 says, And be found in Him, in Him, in Christ, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Father, we thank You for this day for your blessings for your word and father as we study together i pray that every word spoken is yours and not mine and i pray your will is done in our lives and in our church and we thank you so much for jesus and we pray in his name amen well as most of you know i spent the last week with my, I was blessed to spend uh, the week with my kids and grandkids down at the beach. Uh, you also know 
that the beach is my happy place. It is the only place that I can go where my mind stops racing. Uh, I, have, I have a, a very short attention span. And uh, it's the only place where I can actually unwind. There were two days, by the way, two days where we loaded up to go to dinner and I forgot my phone. <laughs> that is impossible. I forgot my phone. I let it run down a couple of times. It is my happy place. The place to relax, uh, the place to unwind, uh, just to, to enjoy time. And then you throw in kids and grandkids, it makes it any, even better. But there's some lessons from the beach before I get to the sermon. I just want to share some of these lessons. Uh, to me, it's the greatest place in the world. Only heaven will be better uh, than the beach. Uh, speaking of phones, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, some of you didn't forget yours, did you? Uh, so here's some lessons from the beach. Uh, one is acceptance. No one cares who you are at the beach. No one cares. They don't care who you are. They don't care what you do. Uh, they, they don't care anything about you. They don't care what you're wearing. They don't care what you're not wearing. They don't care anything about you at the beach. Everybody just come down and enjoy the beach. Another lesson is wellness. You feel better at the beach. You just feel better. You're just, it's like you're, uh, uh, you, you, you have newfound energy. Uh, now, I know Amy, where's Amy? I know Amy doesn't like this because sand ruins everything for her. But you just feel better. I mean, you, you're invigorated. Uh, you're refreshed. And uh, uh, maybe those waves that just keep, they, they just keep throwing energy into you. But uh, everybody feels better at the beach. And uh, they have a little spring in their step. Uh, that's different. Uh, at the beach, there's commitments that are made, and this is always interesting. People make these commitments. They feel so, they get there, and they feel so good that they do things like, all right, I'm going to run every day. And so you see them, and when you watch them run, you can tell that, well, it's been a long time since you've run. <laughs> um, maybe you should walk. Uh, maybe you should relax a little bit. Uh, but you see them on Sunday and Monday, maybe Tuesday. But for, before long, though, you don't see them anymore. They're not running. And you know they're not going to run when they get home. And so we make these commitments. It's almost like revival. When we make these commitments, you know, we're going to do this and we're going to do that. And then Monday comes, you know. But these commitments, you see them. I'm going to get in shape. I'm going to stay in shape. Bad thing is, though, that Krispy Kreme is right <laughs> across the street and the light's on 24-7. So if you're going to make a commitment, you've got to overcome things. Here's another lesson from the beach. Distractions. We get all wrapped up in, in, in all kinds of things. It, it, may be, it may be the breeze. It may be the shells. It may be the people. It may be going out to dinner. It, it may be all kinds of things, but before long we miss the main thing. We miss the ocean. It's the ocean that controls everything at the beach. It's the ocean that controls how much room you have on the beach. It's the ocean that controls whether you can go into the water or not. It's the ocean that controls the shells that you pick up. It's all about the ocean, but we get distracted by all these other things. But then in the ocean, you see the Creator. And you see, this is incredible. In the beginning, God created the oceans and the heavens. And then... The best of all lessons, 
broken shells. I love to pick up shells. And I pick up the same shells every year. I've got thousands of shells. What are you going to do with the things? I don't know. Some I give away. Some I put in little jars. And some I just mark this year I got these shells. But what are you going to do with a bunch of shells? But something I just love to do, walking up and down the beach and just pick up shells. I'm looking for perfect shells. If they, if they have a little crack in them, toss them aside. If they're broken in some way, I toss them aside. If they're not perfect, I just toss them aside. So one day I take Ainsley, my four-year-old granddaughter, and we're walking down the beach. And so I'm, t- I'm telling her about shells and picking up shells. Except Ainsley, she starts picking up these pieces of shells. Broken pieces of shells. They're just, to her, they're colorful or they're, but they're useless. They're broken. Nobody wants those shells. But she's picking them up everywhere. This one, Granddad, and this one, Granddad, and this one, Granddad. And she picks them up and washes them off and brings them back so I'm put in my pocket. She picks them up and washes them off and brings them back and put them in my pocket. What a lesson. And you're already thinking about it. That's the Lord. That's, that's what He does. It's even hard to talk about it. The lessons we can learn. These pieces of shells that to me were useless. To her, they were important. It's like people who are broken and seem so useless. But to the Lord, He says, You're beautiful. I have a hope and a future for you. You're beautiful. I have a hope and a future for you. In Psalms 40, it talks about how he lifted us out of the horrible pit and put us on a rock to stay. To what is broken and useless to the Lord Jesus. He heals And He fixes. And we're worth everything to Him. We're worth His Son. Broken lives. He mends. He heals. He rescues. And we're beautiful to Him. And we have a hope and a future. He has a hope and a future for us. Incredible what I learned from those kinds of things. And I would never have told her those are useless. To her, they were important and beautiful. I learned such a lesson of what the Lord Jesus has done for me and for you and for anyone who feels broken and useless, and worthless. Jesus said, come to me. Bring your baggage, bring your struggles, bring your brokenness, bring all of this. I'll give you rest. I'll give you hope and a future. Well, you know, our happy place here can always be impacted by so many things. For instance, the very first day I'm sitting there on the beach, happy. So I got a text. I mean, it was early Monday morning. My boss is leaving for another university. Now, there's things, I won't go into all the details, but I mean, it was a shock. I knew nothing. No one knew anything. And so we're getting ready for a new president. 
And now my vice president is gone. That's the first thing Monday morning. Gone. He's leaving. Man, he's doing a great job when we were all into this stuff. He's gone all of a sudden in my happy place. I was not happy. The same day I found out because of circumstances, we're going to lose a staff member. They're going to lose their job over circumstances. In my happy place, I was not happy. And that happens in life in what we think is so, we're so happy and everything is going so well and all of a sudden something happens that we can't control and we're not happy. And so I want to tell you about the real happy place. The one that really matters and that brings eternal happiness and that brings joy in this life. Joy that cannot be stolen away by circumstances. And the real happy place is in Christ. The real happy place is for Christ. And the real happy place is with Christ. And so I want you to see these things and know that whether you're on the beach or in the hospital, whether you have incredible health or you have some disease, whether everything's great in your life or everything is falling apart in your life, you can find the happy place in Christ. First of all, as we look at being in Christ, in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, it says, Therefore, if any be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And as Paul said, and to be found in Him, not with my own righteousness, but that which I get from Him through faith. And so in Christ we have life. In Christ, He he gives us life, and He says, I am come that you might have life. And have it more abundantly. In the Lord Jesus Christ, we can have abundant life, whatever you have, whatever your circumstances are, because of Him. In life with Christ, you have not only the the confidence in Him, you not only have life in Him, abundant life here or life to the full, whatever the circumstances are, you know that if something happens, you're going to heaven. And you have eternal life. So you can live every day in confidence that whatever happens, it's okay. Because I am in Christ. My happy place. In Christ we not only have Life, but we have His presence. Listen, we, we cannot say enough about how powerful that is to know that we're in Christ and we have that comfort. Knowing that He has promised to supply all of our needs. Knowing that He will give us the strength to do anything that we need to do in Christ. In Christ is our happy place because of His presence. In Christ, and and I've talked to you so much about this and won't go through the story again, but in Psalms 27, when we're in Christ, we have the pavilion. In verse 5 it says of Psalm 27, For in the time of trouble He shall hide me in His pavilion. This is a place of rest. This is a place of restoration. This is Tim sitting under an umbrella in a chair with the ocean breeze and the waves coming and a time of rest and re-energizing 
It is the pavilion of the Lord Jesus Christ to get away from the crazy things of this world and rest in Christ. He is our refuge in Psalm 46 and verse 1. One of my favorite verses. The Lord is my refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. This is the place of protection. This is the place of peace. Listen, when you're in the arms of the Lord Jesus Christ, there is peace. No one can take you out of His hand. We're in His hand, and His hand's in the Father's hands, and we are protected. Nothing gets to us unless He allows it or sends it, and then it's only for our good. He is our refuge, the place of peace and protection. And then in Christ... We have the rock. We have the foundation. We had all of these people, they build sculptures on the sand this week. This one guy had this incredible shark. He spent all day on this shark. I mean, it was, it, it, he must have been a professional. He had that thing all fixed up in the fin and all of this. It was unbelievable. When the, when the tide come up, it took like 10 seconds. And it was gone. And see, there are people who think their happy place is in this thing or this activity or this pursuit or this pleasure or this or this or this. And in an instant, it's gone. But in Christ, in Christ, He is the rock of our lives. When we've been delivered from the horrible pit, When we've been saved from our sins, He puts us on a rock. The Lord Jesus Himself, the rock, the foundation of our lives. And whatever storms come to us, the foundation never shakes, never shatters, never falls, never washes away. The rock is solid. The Lord Jesus is solid. Our happy place is in Christ. As a matter of fact, you can never be fulfilled. You can never find the real meaning to life without being in Christ. Listen, if you're here without the Lord Jesus today, you need Him. You need to come asking Him to forgive you of your sins. You need to come accepting Him as Savior. You need to come just giving your life to Him. And you'll find the real happy place of your life. Secondly, our happy place is for Christ. Now, what in the world does that mean? That means we're doing what He wants us to do. In 1 Thessalonians 4, 3, you know the Bible is so very clear about God's will for our lives. One, he, it's His will that you would be saved. God wants you to be saved. The second thing is God wants you to grow up. Now, basically, how's that? He wants you to be saved, born into His family, and then He wants you to grow up. He doesn't want you to be a baby Christian for your whole life. He wants you to grow up. He wants you to mature. He wants you to be, this is the will of God, even your sanctification. He wants you to become like Him, like the Lord Jesus. That's what He wants you to be is like the Lord Jesus Christ and doing the things He did. And so there's two things in this, uh, in this being Christ-like, if you're going to be like the Lord Jesus Christ. And that doesn't mean to be like the Lord Jesus that you're religious, whatever that means. And it means a lot of things to a lot of people, right? As a matter of fact, you know what the Bible says we are looking at in class today? That if you seem, seem to be religious and you can't control your tongue, you know what it says about your religion? It says it is useless. That's what it says. Useless or 
worthless. That's what it says. And so he doesn't want you to be religious. He wants you to be like the Lord Jesus Christ. That's God's will for your life. There's a lot of people religious. Religious, they're not even saved. Religion won't save you. We need to be like the Lord Jesus Christ. And by doing that, one of the things is we've got to be in our culture. In Matthew 5, 13 through 16, first of all, it says we've got to be salt. That means we've got to, we've got to give the Christian flavoring to our world. You've got to sprinkle some salt, some Christ-likeness. We've got to preserve our culture. We ought to give Christian flavoring to our culture. We've got to prevent the decay of our culture. Salt. Preservative. Flavor. And Jesus went on to say that if you've lost your saltiness, if a salt, if salt is not salty, it's worth nothing but to be thrown out. Right? So Christians, if we're not salty... If we're not pre preventing decay, if we're not preserving the Christian influence, if we're not adding Christian flavor, Jesus said we're worthless. That's what He said. So we got to be, your happy place is for Christ. You cannot be content to, not, to, to being uninvolved. You'll never find peace, contentment, happiness in Christ until you are involved in His ministry. You have to be involved in His ministry, in His church. And the other thing is, is to be in the harvest. In the harvest. In Matthew 9, 36 through 38, Jesus was looking out over the harvest. He called it the harvest, the people. And He saw all these people and they were just wandering. They didn't know where they were going. They didn't know what they were going to do. In other words, they were what? Lost. And they needed a shepherd. They needed, they, they needed to be guided. They needed direction. They needed help. Well, he said, pray for workers. He didn't say, Pray for the lost. I mean, he's, he, here's what the Bible says. You read it, Matthew 9, 36 through 38. Jesus is looking over the lost, and he's moved with compassion, the Lord Jesus. He's moved with compassion. He probably had tears. The Bible tells us. He, he, he wept. Uh, he, he, he was moved by things that happened to people. He was moved with compassion when he saw the lost. But he didn't say, let's all gather together and pray for the lost. He said, pray for workers in the harvest. Because he knows that the good news taken into the harvest will win people to Christ. So he said, pray for workers. If you want to find your happy place, it will be in the harvest leading the lost people to Christ. Nothing greater than that, to reaching people for the Lord Jesus Christ. And so your happy place is in Christ and for Christ in doing His work. And then ultimately, as we've been singing this morning, with Christ, there is coming a day when we will be with Christ. We're going to be with Him in wherever He is forever. Look in 1 Thessalonians 4 again. Now listen. He's going to come and get us. He's going to come and get us. He says, I say this by the Word of the Lord, we who are alive and remain under the coming of the Lord will not prevent or precede them who are asleep. For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Those who have already died in Christ. 
And then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever, 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 forever be with the Lord. He's preparing us a place, John 14. He said, I'll prepare a place. I'm coming to get you. And there you'll be with me forever. We're going to be with him. There's our real happy place is to be with him. Now, look in Revelation 21. To be with Christ. In verse 4. See, I can go through the scriptures and I can explain heaven to you and you can't handle it. I can't handle it. Because I can't grasp it. Can you understand what a place looks like? That the asphalt is pure gold. Can you understand that place? Can you understand where the gold is so pure it's clear? It looks clear as glass. Can you understand where gates of the city are just made of big pearls? Can you understand that? Can you grasp that the foundations of that city are all these precious stones? Can you imagine even looking at a place like... So can you handle that? You, don't even, you can't even imagine what heaven will look like. You, you can't imagine. But you can feel this. You can feel this. Here is heaven. In Revelation 21, 4. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Can you relate to that? Can you? Yep. And there shall be no more death. Can you relate to that? Neither sorrow, no sorrow. Can you relate to that? No crying, no pain. All of those things are gone. When we're with Him, we're in our real happy place because there are none of those things. No pain, no sorrow, no death, no crying, no broken hearts, no abandonment, no abuse. None of those things. And even if you could grasp all the beauty of heaven, you won't even notice until you see Jesus. And He is what heaven is all about. The Lord Jesus is our real happy place. In Christ, for Christ, and one day literally with Christ. Amen. Amen. God bless you. May we all find that happy place. If you're not saved, you need in Christ. If you're not serving Him... You need to be for Christ. And then one day, I hope it's all at the same time. But if not, one by one, you'll go be with Him. And we will be happy for you. God bless you. Let's pray.